Turns out, nine times out of 10, if you really want to calculate whether or not a chemical reaction is going to be spontaneous or not, you're actually going to calculate the, what's going to be called the change in Gibbs free energy. And what Gibbs free energy does is it puts everything into perspective of the system. So you're not worrying about the system and the surroundings. And then all you have to worry about is the entropy and the enthalpy. You don't have to worry about what's going on with the entropy of the surroundings. Okay. So Gibbs free energy, I'll define what that is in a second, but really it's delta G, okay, change in Gibbs free energy, is equal to the enthalpy, and this is all for the system. The first time I'm going to write it, I'll write it system, but after that I usually get lazy and I stop writing system. This is always about the system from here on out. <coughs> Minus T delta S. All right, and again, this is for, or in Kelvin. We keep our temperature in Kelvin. All right, so if you really want to, in your book, it tells you how they derive this equation. They, and it is derived from this equation. You basically take the negative of both sides and work your way to the system. Okay. So when you take the negative of both sides, it switches signs. So delta S for the universe is positive because change in entropy is increasing. But when we put it in terms of Gibbs free energy, the uh, conclusion, you have to switch the signs. So if delta G is negative, the reaction or the change is spontaneous. If delta G is positive, that means the reaction is non-spontaneous. There's one other possibility. Delta G, is equal to zero. Delta G is equal to zero. And when that occurs, actually, there's two reactions at the same rate. Equilibrium. So if delta G equals zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. Our good old friend equilibrium, back to say hi. All right, so that's pretty much what we're going to be using this equation uh, for, all right, um, to tell if a chemical reaction is spontaneous or not. But uh, it turns out thermodynamically, this has a much more practical use. And why it became so uh, popular in the chemistry and physics community is the, the um, reason why this uh, equation was developed and became so popular is uh, essentially the same reason why uh, chemistry and physics, there was so much uh, research into chemistry and physics at the turn of the century, early 1900s, and was that, for, that was for the Industrial Revolution and engines. Okay? There was a lot of research into engines on how we can make them more efficient, how we can get energy out of them. All right? And a lot of this thermochemistry and thermodynamics came out of that, time, of that era when they're really studying chemistry uh, to get energy out of it, all right? So it gives free energy, and the name kind of tells you what it is, or kind of leads you to the, to the actual definition, so free energy, all right? So this, there's no really thing that's free energy, but what happens is if the reaction is spontaneous, 
However much energy comes out of that system after the chemical reaction has done, that's the amount of energy we can get to do work in our energy. All right, or in our energy, in our engine. That's what I was talking about. So Gibbs and Carnot, he was another big name for engine research. That's why this uh, reaction was developed. If a reaction is non-spontaneous, what's that mean? It's requiring energy. You've got to put energy into that reaction to get it to go. Guess what? That's not driving you to campus. Okay? You've got to put energy in. It's not getting energy out of it. If the reaction is at equilibrium, guess what? You're not getting any energy out of that either. All right? It's going back and forth at the same rate. Okay? Only if a reaction is spontaneous, going to go, do you have any possibility of getting energy to do work, to drive an engine? All right? And so that's uh, where this came out of, and that's why it's called free energy. Gibbs free energy is a measure of how much energy that will not erase. It's permanent. Of how I'll just have to eat that old that'll go wrong. <laughs> Computer froze for a second, I guess. can be used how much energy from a chemical reaction I want to say sorry can be used for work All right, so now we've got enthalpy and entropy all together in the same equation, and the magnitudes of both will determine if we're going to have a spontaneous reaction, and if we really want to think about it, how much energy we can get out of the system to do work. Okay, so what are the signs for delta H and delta S going to do to this equation? Okay, we already know that if delta H is less than zero, what's that mean? Exothermic or endothermic? Exothermic. And what do those tend to be? Do those tend to be spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Okay. Tend to be spontaneous. The reaction. Yeah, I'll just say if delta H is uh, less than zero, exothermic, um, it will tend to be spontaneous. If delta H is positive, i.e. endothermic, it will tend to be non-spontaneous, right? Now let's incorporate and think what delta S, our entropy, is going to do. If Delta S is positive. What's that mean? Is entropy going up or going down? Are you getting a call? Hello? Oh, you've got the, you've, uh, you've got, this is a classroom. I'm not sure the HR department's uh, phone number. Uh, no, I don't. Do you have a computer available? I would, I would just, I mean, I would just go on Broward.edu's website and just, uh, yeah, Broward.edu and look up for HR. Yeah, no problem. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, sh oh, I should have got her on board with Planet McPlanet Face. 
Like, have you heard about this ninth planet? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, somebody's trying to hey, try to get a job. It's not a nice. Yeah. It's like, I didn't even think you could get lines in the. So those are emergency phone numbers. Like if like if there's like an emergency, they call in. Like we get the, we get the phone number. But apparently that's an actual number. I should ask her. I should ask her what number she called, and then I could prank other instructors. <laughs> and they're in here. Like Dr. Hamilton's teaching in here. Ho oh, ho. <laughs> Is your, all right, so, yes. If delta S is positive, what does that mean? Did we decide? Is the entropy increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Increasing. Is that good or bad for spontaneity? Good. Good. That's what nature tends to do. It tends to get more disordered. That follows the second law of thermodynamics. So if the entropy is increasing, the reaction will tend to be spontaneous. I'm leaving in the phone call in that video, future video. Future students are just like, what is he talking? <laughs> and then, of course, if delta S is positive or negative, what's that mean? Entropy, we'll just, I'll catch up with you. What's happening to the entropy? It's decreasing. It's decreasing, so that means it's getting more ordered. And so that tends to be non-spontaneous. And that should make sense, okay? So we talked about why entropy increasing tends to happen, just because there's always more ways to disorder a system than there are to order it. And since it's pretty much a random process out there, that's going to, whatever happens more often, that's going to work. Now, if entropy is decreasing, that means it's getting more ordered. And just like my office, if I want to order my office, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to start cleaning up. I'm going to have to put energy into it. I don't have to do work. That's why it gets worse, because I don't want to do work. All right? So that's, if we have to put energy into it to order it, that's probably not going to be spontaneous. All right, so we'll start moving forward, combining these into uh, Delta G.